Holbrook Travel is pleased to bring you this webinar today, a photographic journey around the Galapagos with Christina Sheff of KS Nature Photography. The Galapagos Islands offer incredible opportunities for natural encounters. Christina recently led a group of fellow photographers to the Galapagos, where they explored about a dozen of the archipelago's islands and islets and photographed unique wildlife and landscapes along the way. Today, we're treated to a glimpse of their experience through Christina's lens. During our webinar today, we'll first hear briefly about Holbrook Travel's history in the Galapagos from company president, Andrea Holbrook. Then we'll turn it over to Christina, who will share engaging photos, videos, and stories from their trip. And again, we'll have time for questions at the end, so please feel free to submit those at any point. Andrea Holbrook joined the Holbrook Travel Team in 1993 and has been the president and CEO since 1998. Founded in 1974, Holbrook Travel was an early pioneer in eco-travel, an early adopter of carbon offsetting, and now is a global tour operator with a mission to foster sustainable travel. In addition to her role at Holbrook, Andrea supports the work at Selva Verde Lodge and Rainforest Reserve in Costa Rica. Andrea also serves on the advisory boards of several organizations, including the Sarapiki Conservation Learning Center, the Center for Responsible Travel, or CREST, and the Climb for Cancer Foundation. Uh, based in San Diego, California, Christina Sheff is an award-winning photographer and professional nature photographer, uh, recognized for her photographic work in National Audubon Society, as well as a finalist in the prestigious Wildlife Photograph of the Year competition. competition. Christina's photos have been published in magazines and articles around the world, including National Geographic, Wild Planet Photo Magazine, California 101, San Diego Audubon Society, American Wild Magazine, Birders Digest, Marine Conservation Magazine UK, North American Nature Photography Association, and many more. There have also been, uh, her photos have also been featured in art shows and galleries around the country. And Christina operates a successful business leading photography workshops and tours to Scotland to see puffins, uh, as well as Ireland, the Galapagos Islands, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Hungary, and the Bosque de la Pache, excuse me, in New Mexico. She also leads workshops for bird festivals around the country and presents at various events. Christina spent years studying and photographing the rushing grebes and guides her clients at Lake Hodges in San Diego to experience this amazing behavior and capture their own photos. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Andrea. Uh, welcome, Andrea. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, appreciate that introduction. And it's just such a pleasure to have everyone uh, with us here today um, to enjoy this feast for the eyes. Thank you to Christina Chef. We just um, really enjoy, we're gonna have such a wonderful time um, feeling and uh, experiencing the islands, as you said, through Christina's lens. And I'm, I'm just really looking forward to that. Um, if there's one place that I uh, just feel so at home, uh, it's the Galapagos Islands. Um, it really, um, for me, has just been so, I've been so privileged for it to be part of my life experience uh, for so long. Um, that uh, picture of me there, um, it's a little hard to see. It's a black and white of me standing on a giant tortoise. Um, that's um, at age five. And um, that's just for at least for me how long I've been involved um, in this incredible archipelago. Um, and it's been that way um, since that time, really just been privileged to be going back to Ecuador um, for many, many years. Um, it's It was really one of the very first destinations that we began exploring um, really before Holbrook was founded. Um, it was just a place that uh, Mrs. Holbrook, my mother, the company founder, uh, had heard about and just wanted to um, wanted to be a part of exploring and brought uh, some travelers there from the University of Florida. Um, and, and really that just kicked off many, many years of bringing, um, you know, nature lovers to explore the islands. 
Um, and um, since that time, we've just been fortunate to work with a fabulous uh, group of vessels and partners. Um, Christina is going to share with you um, one of the relationships that, you know, we hold dear uh, in the Galapagos. The Whitmer family not only is um, runs a phenomenal uh, organization in the islands, uh, but uh, is part of the whole history um, of the islands. Their uh, forefathers, or I guess it was great grandparents, were really amongst the pioneers um, to settle in the islands there in Floriana. Um, we actually have another webinar that's in our uh, YouTube channel that I invite you to check out about that amazing family and their history. Um, and um, like the Whitmer family, we work with uh, several other, um, again, close partners uh, in the islands. Um, and um, we feel like we have just um, a phenomenal family really down there and look forward to bringing you there. It's, it's a phenomenal place for families, uh, for groups, for photographers, for birders. It's really uh, just a, an amazing experience. So. Uh, without uh, further ado, I um, welcome Christina. Thank you so much and looking forward to having a taste of it, uh, particularly now as, as in December, we're going to be just hearing the splashing of the ocean and getting away from, from the chill even here in Florida. Thank you, Christina. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for everything. I'm so happy to be here. And while I run through this technical thing of sharing my screen, I'm making sure my sound is set to video. Yes, it is. And then I'm going to do a new share because I got to do this awesome magic of computer stuff. Then just bear with me. You guys hear me okay? You sound great, Christina. Yep, Fantastic. you sound good. Fantastic. I just wanted to check in with that. And you should be able to see a cute, super cute blue-footed booby. And... Um, Let's see, one more thing I need to do is show the video panel. Here we go. Ready to rock. Thanks so much for having me here. And uh, I saw a lot of familiar faces entering the, entering the familiar names, actually. Some of previous folks who've been to on the Galapagos tour and um, a couple of people who are signed up for November next year. So I'm excited to share all this. Um, here is my feel about Galapagos. I came home, it was my first trip there, and I told everybody that I have fallen in love again. And this time it's not a person, it's actually the Galapagos Islands, and it stole my heart. I love my grebes, I love my puffins. Don't get me wrong, don't tell them this, but Galapagos Island has got up the list for now, at least, and I think he'll stay there for a long time. So the next uh, little bit of time here, 40 some minutes, I'll take you on a little journey. Uh, we photographed over 150 different species of animals, wildlife, and birds, wildlife, and plants. Won't be able to share with you everything, but hopefully I can take you on a little journey here. And during the, uh, during the presentation, once I be able to hit the enter key, uh, this slide is just really a quick contact and to tell me uh, two seconds about me, the KS Nature Photography. Those of you who've seen my name spelled out, Christina with the Z and the SCH and all the E's and all the F's. You're like, oh, great. Uh, I am originally from Hungary. Uh, I moved to the US when I was 21. English is not my first language. So if I say something a little bit um, interesting, I call it Hunglish. It's a mix of Hungarian and English, but uh, you know, I do, I do all right. But uh, KS Nature Photography was born because I figured Christina Chef Photography, nobody's gonna remember how to spell that thing. So. There goes KS, and uh, most people know me by that. Sometimes people I see at conferences, they look at me, they're like, oh, you're KS? I'm like, yep, that's me. <laughs> so um, if you have any questions throughout this uh, presentation and you feel like you want to email me or something you didn't catch, please do. I uh, love connecting with people and answering any questions I might have. If I don't have an answer, I'll put you I'll point you in the right direction. And you guys um, talked, I already went through this, the only two things I wanted to mention a little bit about me is uh, I am a member of the Ethics Committee for the North American Nature Photography Association. Ethics and conservation is, besides taking photos, it's a very important, very dear to my heart. I am pride myself being a very ethical photography, so don't be surprised if you're on the tour with me and we do everything that's proper. 
uh, and I will educate you also. I'm also a member of the Conservation Committee for the San Diego Audubon and work on a couple of projects. One is related to the Grebes over here in Lake Hodges. And thanks to Etienne, the backer for the photo that is on Galapagos Islands, one of the islands that we found this old whale bone and he arranged this cool little, I don't know, frame. And I said, fine, I'll pop in the photo and later I'll talk about Etienne. He's absolutely just amazingly wonderful. So let's take a trip to Galapagos Islands. But before we get there, I obviously had to pack some gear. So photographer or not, all the Galapagos on my tours are always open to photographers, non-photographers. Maybe you want to learn about photography. When I say I'm doing a workshop, that means I get to teach you photography if you're interested. If you don't have a camera, you're welcome to borrow mine. Galapagos, for my photographer peeps, is not your place for that 600 prime lens. Leave it at home. For the non-photographers, this is your place to bring your little cell phone, maybe bring your super small zoom camera, because later you'll see we're quite close to wildlife. So good news, pack light. Then hop on the plane. And uh, a lot of people ask me about travel. I just came back yesterday, two days ago from Costa Rica, which was another whole brook partner travel outing super fun and uh, super easy i've been traveling since uh, june been to london scotland uh, ecuador galapagos costa rica now stay safe it's it's actually holbrook partnering with holbrook travel it makes it so easy because you land at the airport and there's always your driver waiting for you with a huge sign you can't miss it so actually talk about Galapagos when we fly into, I flew into Quito, I felt out of all the airports I've been flying to, especially lately, it felt the safest. And I don't know if this is because the airport is super uh, nice, uh, secure, but also people there, so in a meta of other places in the world, take this whole pandemic very seriously. So follow all the rules and it felt, it felt comfortable, it felt safe. And quickly, I got whisked away to a hotel where we stay in Quito for a couple nights, one or two nights. And um, this is near the airport. Uh, later, that pool, which was the next day, I said, sure, I can go hang out a little bit at the pool and enjoy the gardens of this lovely hotel. Again, this is included in your tour price. And one of the things I did while waiting for my um, for my tour participants to arrive, they all had different flights and every, everybody gets picked up at the airport is uh, to uh, do some photography around the gardens of the hotel. I mean, how easy is that? And then take a nap uh, <laughs> to get ready for more fun. This is the golden rum to Euphonia, by the way. And uh, it was nice, the hotel, I uh, ended up giving them this photo. So I think they used it on their Facebook page. Uh, for the October Galapagos tour and some of the other ones, we include a, a day uh, out, in, um, out in Ecuador, in the Ecuadorian rainforest. Um, it really reminded me of Scotland, wet, green, more wet, and full of life. We actually visited a hummingbird sanctuary, and we photographed a whole lot of uh, uh, different hummingbirds. Okay, here in Southern California, I've got two hummingbirds right now. I have the Annas and the um, Allens. Ecuador, I didn't know where to look or which one to photograph. So here is a few, the Andean Emerald uh, Hummingbird, the Rufus tailed cutie, and then um, the Green Crown Wood Nymph and the White Whiskered Hermit. I know it's a mouthful, the names. Uh, most of the species I've seen in Ecuador or in Galapagos, it was my first time. Same happened with Costa Rica just when I came back. Well, I got to give it to my awesome guide there because he just sent me the list of the 164 species we saw there. So great places to go to, but back to Ecuador. Um, there's another uh, photo of me in, uh, in the rainforest there and a couple uh, different uh, birds on one of the feeders, the flame brom tanager, then one of my little favorites, the blue gray tanager. And I'm in love with flickers. So seeing this golden olive woodpecker found out that they're actually somewhat related to the flickers. With that said, the next day we had a super early flight. I mean, really early, <laughs> really it was dark. <laughs> 
to get over from Quito and fly over to Galapagos. This flight is included in the tour price. Uh, it's pretty much everything is included when you go with Holbrook except your flight to get to Quito, to get to Ecuador. So it's a very nice and they take care of all your reservations, which is super duper cool. And the guide, our local guide in Quito, came with us to the airport to make sure we get on the plane and we uh taking care of all the entry passes and everything all the baggage stuff checking in it was so easy this was my itinerary in october later i'll show you a couple itineraries that i'm doing again in 2022 and 2023 this is covering most of the east islands and we landed at the airport then we got whisked away to this beauty okay this was my first time staying on the boat, longer time. Uh, I thought I had seasickness, but not really actually. These are the most comfortable catamarans ever. There are 10 rooms on there. Uh, soon I'll show you a little more details about the boat because when you think luxury and the fact that you just float around in your own private little hotel with the best food ever um, and wake up in a different island every morning, Seriously, it's it's just absolutely wonderful. This was our first afternoon, um, first afternoon uh, out. Once we had a lunch, we popped out over to the to Santa Cruz Island. And okay, I'm gonna be playing a few videos in this presentation. I have to uh, tell you, I'm not a. This, these are not pro. I'm a photographer. I do okay with videos. These are cell phone videos, but I wanted to bring you there, share with you. This first video, it's it's interesting because this was my first afternoon on Galapagos my first time on Galapagos, just listen what I say on the end of the video. So I'm going to play it. Well, here we are hanging on the Galapagos Islands. We just got here today and out this afternoon for an absolutely perfect day. Wow. You just spotted a shark in the water. Very cool. That's E.T., our very cool naturalist guide. Ah, so uh, I've already decided, just got here. I'm coming back May 2023. Stay tuned. So as I said, I, uh, I already decided that, that afternoon that, yep, this is this, you know, they say uh, a trip of a once in a lifetime trip. It was so good. It was already so good that I have to do it again and again. So <laughs> uh, a little bit about Galapagos Islands. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but it is situated uh, about 600 miles off the coast of Ecuador. It is a part of Ecuador. Uh, it is a national park uh, that's protected and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, the Galapagos Marine Resources Reserve uh, takes care of all the waters around the islands, and I, I haven't, I forgot to put this in there, but the latest news is that their, uh, their uh, area is just expanded to include the waters from Galapagos all the way to Costa Rica, so it will be all protected. And uh, when you're in, the, it, it is, because it's so remote and it's such, it's in such an isolation, you'll be seeing species there that you'll never see anywhere else. It's very unique uh, to being on Galapagos, and some of them been there since the prehistoric times, and they haven't changed. Uh, it is uh, it is the source of Darwin's uh, theory of evolution, and it's a priceless uh, place for. It's a kind of like a living laboratory for scientists. Uh, when we're in Galapagos, the very cool thing about these tours, it is required and it's appreciated, obviously, by me and by everybody. We have a full time naturalist guide. These are uh, trained, uh, very knowledgeable people. We had Etienne de Becker. He lived on the islands. He's from originally from Belgium. He lived on the islands for 30 some years. And boy, the amount of knowledge you get, it's fantastic. It also gives me some, gives me extra time to concentrate on photography, teaching photography or birding or whatever you would like to do. As I said, you don't have to be a photographer. So most of you who think of Galapagos, think of boobies. They come in all shapes, all sizes, all colors. Well, yep, we're talking about the birds and these are the Nazca boobies. When you get to Galapagos, we also have the red-footed boobies. And as I said, they come in different colors and shapes. The red-footed boobies have a white plumage or they can have a brown plumage. Uh, the reason I picked October, because I really wanted to go October, November when it's uh, nesting season for a lot of the birds, including the boobies. So this one is bringing in a bit of a 
uh, flower slash nesting material for uh, his loved one. And of course, the very super cute blue-footed boobies who were in love as ever and offering each other, uh, these are red-footed, uh, offering each other different uh, gifts and nesting material. And did I say, hmm, it was nesting season? <laughs> So yes, I uh, didn't spy on them too much, but uh, red-footed boobies, um, well, working on that little cute chick. So you can tell from all the photos, the birds are relaxed, very comfortable. You don't need a long lens. So you're wondering how close Christina, are we? As yes. I'm so sorry to jump in and interrupt. We're getting comments from a few people that the, um, that the visuals are a little soft. They're not quite as clear as they could be. Um, I'm wondering if I could ask you to try turning your video off and let's see if that maybe helps with the, oh, with the clarity I see. a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I can do that. Some of Thank my you so much. Yeah, some of my photos might not be. Is that any better? It looks okay on my end, but if people are still having issues, um, feel free to put that in the chat or the Q&A and we'll, okay. we'll see if so, we can. Right, right. I wonder if. Yeah, our, our, mine's been clear all along. I've okay. had, you know, very crisp images, but we've had a few folks uh, uh, saying that um, that it's not clear. It's a little bit blurry. So I've turned off my video for that reason as well. All right. Well, we're going with no video and that's fine by me. <laughs> as long as you can hear me. So, yeah, it looks OK. It could be a connection. I mean, we're connecting from all around the world. Who knows? So. Uh, it could be that too, but um, so talk about the next screen, which is uh, how close do we get to the uh, birds itself? Here is one I call it the uh, booby traffic jam. <laughs> That's cute. It's traffic jam, booby traffic jam. <laughs> This is very normal. Of course, they have the right way. So we just step aside and let them be. You have to stay on the trail all the time. Just hang out and uh, look. They just hang out with us. couple youngsters on the tree. You see them? Right there. It was really hard to uh, figure out where to look or, you know, which bird do you photograph? So the good news is we spend a lot of time on the islands, on different islands, and, uh, and it's it's a it's a, it's not a big hike; it's a f easy walk. So it's um, it's um, you have time to plenty of time to photograph it. But you can see from the video how actually how everything works. We stay on the trail, and they just uh, they just get around you. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, a few other birds that uh, are down at the shore: a couple of senderlings. As I said, 150 species. It's uh, 150 things uh, overall that we saw. It's, I won't be able to include them all in here, but it's absolutely very rich. The Galapagos um, uh, yellow warbler, warbler, and uh, me, the lots of finches. This is the medium ground finch, and then you have the Galapagos flycatcher, or of course the Galapagos mockingbird. Now. One of my favorites, uh, besides the boobies and some of the other birds, maybe because of that long tail, was the red-billed tropic bird. We photographed them, we photographed these guys, most of it from the dinghy, which is the little panga, or we call it the zodiac or whatnot, the little boat that takes us from the boat that's uh, parked in the bay to shore. And um, a little, little few more of the red uh, tropic birds. I, I fell in love with that tail, I mean, seriously. 
uh, <laughs> it's a bird to impress uh, everybody. And here is uh, one more, uh, another little video of we are taking photos. How big of a lens do you need? Booby chicks in the mango tree. And they're absolutely, totally comfortable with us. Hey guys. There you go. Little red footed booby. Show you the tree. There we go. Got a cute little chick right here. She's looking at up kind of like I'll come see that in just a second. Here is another booby chick, a little bit bigger one. And then just on the other side, Jill says there is a cute little swallowtail gull chick. There you go. Nope. Oh. <laughs> uh, amazing. This is an awesome guy, E.T. Say hi, E.T. Hi. I'm a big boy. All right. See you later. So I had I had fun just doing a little bit of video to get an idea of um, of um, uh, how close and where where you are walking about and how uh, not the terrain is not. There was one or two islands where we have to. Uh, get over some rocks, but you have to remember uh, all the outings are optional. If you feel like you need a morning off, maybe you want to sleep in, um, then you can stay on the boat or do something else. So that's an option. This is a this is also a chick. He hasn't uh, fledged yet. It's a frigate bird uh, chick, a little bit on the bigger side of the of the birds. Now it was nesting season for a lot of the uh, a lot of the animals. Uh, it was it was great to see new life uh, coming. Uh, coming uh, alive and uh, that's the Nazca booby. I think the chick is maybe a couple hours old, if not less than a day, as well as the Galapagos um, sea lion uh, chick with a maybe a two, three day old uh, little one. And uh, then of course you saw some older uh, chicks, Nazca booby chicks uh, hanging around. They do nest on the ground. That's very normal for them. And they just kind of hang around. They have a little nesting circle. So when they go out for food uh, during the, around the circle, they put these uh, little pieces of stone. They arrange it in a certain way. So when they come back, they know which circle is theirs to go and feed their chicks. But talk about feeding chicks. It's not that easy. <laughs> This was a very interesting encounter. Don't, don't worry, it has a happy ending. Mom went and got another fish, but he, she really tried to feed the chick and uh, with, out of the blue, a frigate bird came, out, came down, swooped down so fast and stole the fish that as you can tell, they did not even see it, that it's pretty much stole it out of their mouth that um, and the fish was gone. So uh, it was quite an interesting encounter. Now, as I said, they're not just birds. Uh, cellula, cellulite footed crab, uh, but you see hundreds of these. So I just picked one out to show you some detail or the ghost crab. Then along the boat, we had other wildlife joining us and we were lucky to see one um, Galapagos penguin. These are most mostly seen on the west uh, uh, route that I'll be doing in 2023, uh, but we were lucky to see one in our east uh, on our east route too. And uh, when it comes to just lounging on the beach, enjoying the weather, which was just perfect, um, the, your Galapagos sea lions are having seal or sea lions. The sea lions will have a little ear flap so you can tell uh, which one they are. Uh, there are two in this photo, but imagine about 50 more around it. You can walk around them. Uh, they won't move. You just go by. The only thing you have to watch out for the male because it is courting season. So the male wants to make sure he's got all his ladies nearby uh, to photograph them. So, you know, once in a while, we just kind of sit down and hang out with them face to face. And I haven't even told Holbrook yet, but I think we found a brand new species that has not been discovered yet. And that's called the breaded sea lion. <laughs> <laughs> I just, love, I know, I love watching this cutie, how she rolled all over the sand. And then uh, we said, well, let's call him, her, him, her, the uh, breaded sea lion. So uh, when uh, one of the things we do while we go uh, hop islands on the boat, um, it's very comfortable. We spend actually a day on Santa Cruz Island in the rainforest. 
So you go from sea level and they call it the highlands, right? They said, oh, well, let's, we're going to go up to the highlands and we're going to uh, visit the um, Darwin. Um, this is on Santa Cruz Island, the Charles Darwin uh, research station. Well, I go to Scotland a lot and they call it the highlands there too, which is wet, green and all that. So I was a little scratching my head. I'm like, what do you mean the highlands? Oh boy, you go up there and that's what you see. The mossy green trees, wet, everything green, everything is gorgeous. Another reason, if you like plants and flowers, bring your um, short lens. If you're a uh, you cell phone, it's brilliant. Uh, well, actually, uh, two of these photos in this collage are taken with my cell phone. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's great. Galapagos is also great for macro photography if you're into that. But you can also do macro with your uh, cell phone. This is our uh, group at, um, up at the station. We had a really nice tour. It's very educational. Uh, to be around there. And then we went off to visit the um, Galapagos uh, giant tortoises. They're everywhere. They're, they're slow. So you got plenty of time, obviously. They're slow. So you're plenty of time to photograph them from the right, from the left, from the front, from any way, any shape you want to. Maybe you want to do some close-ups. These are this specific photo, obviously. I'm using a telephoto. I'm not that close. Uh, to the uh, to the tortoises. So I'm using a telephoto. My, um, I think I had my 100-400 lens. That's a Canon lens. One thing for photographers, please do bring a backup camera. There are no uh, Canon rental or Nikon rental stores on the islands. And most of the time we're on the boat. So you don't want to miss all the action. So it's always advised to have just another camera in case if you have one. If not, you make friends with me, I can definitely loan you one of mine since I always take two more of the tortoises. And just to give you uh, another uh, feel and idea of how, what we were doing, where we were, here is another little video. So here we are on Galapagos Islands, hanging with the Gal Galapagos tortoises. Some of them are absolutely Massive, 500 pounds or so, and then you have some little ones. Oh yeah, we got, here you go, we got really cool boots for the day to wear. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> super cool. <laughs> It was quite cool. Hey, these guys are awesome and massive and they love the mud. Uh, so we had those boots. It really helped. And now you're done with birds and lizards and little birds and big birds uh, moved on to the um, uh, iguanas. There was the land iguanas and you can get them in all kinds of, again, they're not moving very fast. And while I'm, I have a, in the photo, I have one, uh, imagine a few other ones just laying around in your path. Uh, and then you got your marine iguanas and I like this photo. I couldn't fit them all in, but there are about 50 of them just kind of hanging out, looking at us and laid on my stomach to get that um, low angle shot and just kind of hang out with them. Uh, you really just have to be careful not to step on them. They're everywhere, including the sea lions with their, with their uh, young ones. And, and that's what's wonderful. Uh, it's just stimulation. There is, there's animals, plants, experiences everywhere you look in the, don't worry. We do get up in the morning early to uh, get on the island uh, for the good light. And uh, we usually stayed in the afternoon. Got on the afternoon later. There's other activities that I'll show you that we, we did between. But uh, one thing I always include, it's nap time because you have to rest up for more fun. So you always have time to take a quick nap. Uh, the waved albatross, I was really, really looking forward to seeing them. They, uh, they, uh, you can see them during this time in October and November, uh, up to December, actually, uh, during, during their mating. Uh, this is not a crop photo, believe it or not. They do fly, just zoom by your head, and they fly quite close. So that's about all uh, I got into my uh, lens uh, to get some detail on it. And I was lucky to witness their uh, mating dance. I am holding a long telephoto lens. This was a little bit further out and uh, didn't have a tripod with me. So I use my knees as the tripod. So excuse the shaking, but uh, here is a little video for you.
this is a quiet um, courtship behavior. Only thing you hear is the is the wind. I really enjoyed watching these gorgeous birds. And um, whenever we were, we spent time. Uh, I'll get to the extracurricular activities in a minute, but. Uh, we also spent a lot of, sometimes we took the dinghy, that's the little, um, the little boat, and uh, went around these uh, rock formations to look for wildlife and fish and uh, different things and also get a great education. So here's a short little clip uh, from the boat. So you see um, what we're doing. group hanging in the boat in the dinghy actually enjoying the uh oops enjoying the view Ooh, i got dizzy the foam that you see there is actually the acid this is algae but with the weight actually hit the rock and die So <laughs> I wanted you to let you see this. That was E.T. giving us a little bit of education. Well, actually, E.T. gave us a lot of education. And that was wonderful about having a full-time naturalist guide is that the, the amount you learn, it's, it's, it's fantastic and it's in overwhelming, but in a good way. So one of the other things you can do, which you, you're uh, encouraged to do, and uh, it's, uh, we, do, we did some snorkeling. And snorkeling gear is uh, given, I mean, uh, arranged for you. Uh, it'll be on the boat. It's a, it's a rental, so you don't have to haul it all the way from the U.S. Uh, snorkeling, kayaking, paddle boarding, uh, between times we could do that. Um, now, I have to admit, I live in California for a while now. I haven't snorkeled in my life. And then I read a little bit about, this is not me, by the way. This is one of my, one of our participants uh, who's a bit of a pro uh, at it, going, um, going, doing a bit of a dive. So I um, wasn't, I'm not a snorkeler. I had no idea how to do it or what to do about it. I am a swimmer, so I knew I'm not afraid of water. But um, I read about Galapagos and one of the things they say, you have to check out the underwater world. It's, you can't do without it. So last minute I bought myself a GoPro, got the gear on the boat and I shim it in the water, learn how to, how to get, go backwards and not step on the stingrays. Then second time dropped in from the boat, I felt like a pro uh, and I had a blast. And uh, okay, I have a few underwater photography friends and video, video, graph, video photographers. Uh, I have a brand new appreciation for the underwater world and underwater photography because mm -hmm. the next one is my first attempt for, to an underwater video using my little tiny GoPro, but it comes with music, so here you go. playing with us she would just come up to our uh, to our uh, face literally and just like hey what's happening and then you look over and there's a green turtle going just swimming by in the school of fish and uh, again later et would tell us about the fish and he knew all the all the species and everything so you learned a whole lot about it so a lot of times we would just take the boat and or the dinghy and go around the different rocks I really enjoyed this view because the 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 rock in the back is kicker rock so one thing I encourage folks to do when you come to Galapagos is bring a landscape lens now remember the cell phone is absolutely wonderful for landscapes and I believe in photography is that whatever camera is in your hand that's the best one uh, the Canon Nikon whatever cell phone bring it along those are you can see the little dinghies we call them the little boats that take you back to the boat that's uh, uh, parked a little further out but uh, different islands different landscapes um, the walks are as i said pretty easy uh, not too strenuous uh, the every night we have a we had a um, 
uh, orientation that you know about the next day. So if you ever feel that, hey, you need a break, you can do that. This is a uh, kicker rock. I think it was one of my favorite uh, uh, formations to go around. We do a couple rounds in the boat. That's actually tip top five in front of it. I'm taking it from tip top two. And some of our clients, Joel down on the end, uh, getting ready to go around the rocks. So that brings me to the boat because you wonder where you're going to be and what you're going to do. The waters were uh, during the time I go November, December, uh, or in uh, in the spring, the waters were actually very calm. I had no problem with seasickness. And this is one of the boats in the tip top fleet, uh, tip top five. I enjoy taking photos of the of the boat. This was our boat. They're all catamarans. Um, very, very comfortable. Uh, this is again, they you usually kind of tend them together. So we would see them a lot. So when I saw the the little rainbow, I said, well, might as well take a photo uh, of them. So hop on the boat with me. Okay, I have to do this because I just, uh, thanks to one of our uh, uh, clients and my friend, Mickey, uh, who was on the boat, she managed to take some of the food photos. Okay, the boat is luxury on its own. Uh, the rooms are massive. The shower is good for, I don't know, two, three people. Uh, I, I didn't know what to expect. I was blown away. Uh, it's not just the boat to me, but the crew. And uh, the crew was... <laughs> I, don't, I can't, it's hard to put it in, in words that they, anytime you came back from snorkeling in your wetsuit, you step on the boat and there they are with a tray of uh, hot cinnamon tea or hot chocolate waiting for you in a towel or having little snacks uh, between meals, the meals, the chef. I, I'll, I'll put a Michelin star on this, on this boat because it's on the boat. You go on the boat, you're like, oh, I wonder what kind of meal I'm going to get. Oh no, three course meals every single time. And breakfast was absolutely awesome. Just a few food, uh, food photos there. I have no idea how they pull that um, out, uh, how they do it. And uh, I'm in love with Ecuadorian food. Very, very tasty. I had no idea they can make so many things out of green bananas, plantains, which is wonderful, especially if you're a vegetarian. But back to our, uh, our peeps and our group and our boat in the background and the cactus uh, um, trees. Uh, on one of the islands having fun. So as I said, there are other things we do than just go on the island and look for wildlife. We also had some fun. They're just uh, Joel and Eric ready to go to do some paddle boarding and you could do some snorkeling. We did have a birthday uh, during the tour. This is Mickey with her birthday cake. And uh, instead of a knife to cut the cake, well, why not give her the X? That wasn't my idea. <laughs> it was from the boat. Uh, crew, don't worry, we're all giggling in the back. You can see us in the mirror, but uh, we had a wonderful time. So there was a bar on the boat. So once or twice we might have visited, although we were the photography crew. So by eight, we were kind of done and ready to go to bed. And you see ET right next to me in the photo on the, on the right side at the end. So I want to talk to you a little bit about him. Uh, he's just an absolutely wonderful human being and uh, educated us and took care of us, our naturalist guy. He also got us to do this little video and it's called, he said, you're on Galapagos, you have to do it. This is on Floriana Island uh, uh, when we were visiting the post office box. And he said, you have to do this video and it's called the booby dance. Blue-footed boobies do a courtship dance where they raise their legs, do a little whistle, do a little something, something. So this is our interpretation of the booby dance. Okay, One, whenever two, you're ready. Three. Ooh, they're well crunched. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh, E.T., he choreographed, he taught us. And then I, this was, I think, our fourth take. We managed to get all of our right legs up at the same time and all of our left legs up at the same time. We had a really good time. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I'm wondering who's hungry. Nobody's hungry here. Uh, this is E.T. and... One of my clients, one of my students, uh, Diego, he's 15 years old. He came on a trip with his father. Yes, the tour is open to the young ones too. And uh, he took it all in. He's a brilliant photographer and very, very smart person uh, asking so many questions of E.T. So he uh, took him under his wing, uh, even more special. And uh, when he found this uh, old, old uh, whale bone, we just had to have a little bit of fun. And the next slide, it is... If he's watching or not, I do dedicate this to E.T. because E.T., you want to phone home. Uh, one day, 
<laughs> this was, I think, our last night on the boat, and it was the moon coming up, and we looked over, and it was the spookiest thing of that light. This is a cell phone photo uh, of that light coming through and shining onto the water. So, of course, uh, all of us at the bar just had to go, E.T., phone home. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I really enjoyed having him on the tour. Talk about tours. Uh, if you guys do want to join and be, uh, I do these tours with Holbrook Travel. The only company I would do these tours with or any of the tours uh, is Holbrook Travel because they'll take care of you from the beginning to the end, including pre-trip. Uh, getting even before you get on the plane. So I went ahead and, uh, and, and uh, as you can tell, I like Galapagos, right? I, you figured this out by now. Uh, you're welcome to join me on any of these tours. Uh, the first, uh, my, the little buttons from my website, or you can go on Holbrook. They're all going to take you to Holbrook where you can sign up online. Uh, the 2022 is in November. Uh, it's just around Thanksgiving. So if you're not into feasting on turkeys, you can come and photograph the birds uh, with me. Uh, I will be doing a May tour in 2023, a spring uh, tour that's also the East route. But when it comes to the ultimate Galapagos, and here is your route. Uh, if you want to go, as I said, I went once and now I want to go back. The East route will cover the East Islands, obviously. And instead of doing East and West, which would be two weeks, it's, an, it's a modified uh, itinerary, the ultimate Galapagos. It's 11 days covering the west and the best of the east islands which is pretty much all of them genovese i think it's one of my favorite islands which is up on top the longest we travel to that all night uh but uh all the islands are absolutely wonderful and you can sign up online uh now i did quickly i'm almost out of time here and almost at the end i do wanted to mention ecuador because as i said i spent one day in ecuador and i said i must go back again um Conveniently, this tour is right before Galapagos. So you come in on November 17th or 18th, sorry. You do a few days in Ecuador. And on the 23rd, off we go to Galapagos. So I don't know. Well, it's just perfectly right. I do have somebody signed up for boat already. So I want to leave you with a video. I took this video the last uh, morning. I couldn't sleep. I didn't want it to, I, I literally didn't want it to leave. I looked out my window and I saw this. I uh, just want to share with you. So I got up this morning to uh, watch the sunrise. Just one more before we leave the boat today. I'm uh, up on top of the sun deck. Everybody's still sleeping. <laughs> Thank you, Galapagos for a wonderful time. I'll see you soon. Oh gosh, I just want to be there. Um, <laughs> um, it was a perfect way to end. And that morning we had a quick outing uh, into a bay nearby. So as we were leaving the boat, the sun finally fully came up and I snapped the shot. Uh, we were going uh, over to uh, take some more photos then back on the boat and get dropped off for our plane. So. I want to say thank you for thank you everybody for um, for watching this and I hope you felt like I, I watch, doing this whole presentation I just got a little emotional because it's it's just one of the most wonderful uh, places on earth to be there and uh, we had a wonderful time uh, the the again the boats the tip top fleet is is just absolutely amazing the guys. They make you feel safe. They take care of you from little details like hanging on to us while we're standing up taking photos because they want us to be stable or just paying a little attention to the food or the, you know, every time I get up in the morning, somebody was there to, oh, would you like some coffee? And I'm like, oh, absolutely. I'm like, what time do you guys get up? Because <laughs> I'm an early bird, but it was absolutely wonderful. So um, if you ever uh, need to contact me or have more info, check on the website and check for the uh, uh, tours with Holbrook and Galapagos, Costa Rica, 
uh, Ecuador and look, really, really looking forward to heading back to all these places. And with that said, I'm going to turn on my uh, video if I can figure this out. This is my end of my presentation. I hope you guys had a really, really fun time. And there we go. And I'm going to stop sharing, right? So you guys can, we can all see each other. There we go. Yay. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I I uh, hope everyone uh, enjoyed that as, as much as we did. I I loved the the albatross video. I thought that was so cool to see the dance. Yeah. Um, so thank you for for sharing with us. Um, we do have time for a few questions before we wrap up, and it looks like we have received a few questions already. Um, one of the questions, the very first video that you showed. Um, where you're walking on the trail. Which island is that, please? I was saying, uh, oh, the trail. Oh, gosh, I forgot. Um, I have to go back and check on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then there was also a photo early on uh, with a, a blackbird that had a white head. Um, I think you said that that was a juvenile um, uh, frigate bird. Is that correct? Well, there was a big bird and that was, yeah, the juvenile, the young frigate bird, like the very, very big one spreading its wings. And then the other one, if it's a small bird, it might have been the finch, if it was a black, white, because they also had a little bit of black and white in it, but. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. We also have a question. Um, let's see. Do you have any tips about um, bringing a second camera? Yes, I think uh, do add tips. Yeah, second camera. I do. I mean, it's it's really uh, it's really up to you. But uh, I would any trips I do, any places I go to that it's slightly remote or very remote. Uh, it's cameras, memory cards, and the whole workup because, especially on the boat, uh, nope, you're not gonna stop at the store as I said. So <laughs> it's nice to have a backup. I always take at least two. Uh, I never had a problem. I had I had times when I loaned one of my cameras to a client. Obviously, I will. If you're not a Canon user, I'm a Canon user, but happy to uh, teach you or share with you. So I'm definitely happy to help you out. So, uh, but I suggest even if it's just a little point and shoot. Remember, your cell phone is not too bad. But even if it's just a little point and shoot, uh, bring something small to have as a second camera. Great, thank you. Um, I may direct this question at Andrea um, or to Andrea. Do, Andrea, do you know um, during severe storms, do any of the Galapagos Islands get washed over and what is the heavy storm season for Galapagos? So um, the um, <clears throat> higher waves, let's say, um, are associated with the Humboldt current, which is essentially prevalent from June to December. So the waters get colder because that's when the um, the big current from Antarctica is coming up the coast of, of you know, South America. Um, and so that denser water brings a more wave activity. So it's a little bit, um, I was happy to hear Christina say that she didn't really get seasick or have any rough waters, um, you know, having traveled when she did, but it is a, a season where there, there can be rougher waters is particularly September, October, November, um, September in particular. Um, and the sort of uh, more that area of more sunshine and hotter temperatures is essentially, you know, from December to June. But uh, because of the unique position of the islands, you know, there really are rarely big storms, um, you know, major, um, you know, major storms. It's, it's relatively stable throughout the year, and it's certainly navigable throughout the year. Great, thank you. Um, we have a question about um, being able to see the waved albatross. Um, Christina, where uh, where is the best place to see the the waved albatross in the which island? Is the, so she gives which is the best trip? Uh, my understanding, there are on land or around between like uh, April, March, uh, through December. So yeah, any of the any of the trips uh, will be you'll be able to see them um either if you do i think they arrive around april so maybe november probably for sure we were there in october there uh, end of october they were um they were in full-blown business <laughs> of <laughs> courting and all that good stuff so you'll be able to see them 
Okay. And those are primarily on Espanola Island, is that correct? Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, Andrea, do you know if there's any uh, status update on the attempt to eradicate the invasive black rats that have been introduced to the islands? Is that anything that you've heard any updates about? Um, I unfortunately I'm not knowledgeable uh, about that. Um, I, I do have to say that um, just sort of being involved in the travel industry and you know hearing comments from from you know participants and et cetera and having been, I have not actually seen uh, personally or heard of the black rats, um, you know, impacting and, you know, the, the experience, you know, that's not to say that, you know, that might not be happening. Um, I just don't, you know, it's not something that I've come across. Um, but um, it has raised my own curiosity. So I, I will have to look look into that. I certainly know about the, um, the goat eradication that was, you know, in place for many, many years, you know, that the uh, CDRS had a program to do uh, culling of, you know, wild goats on the islands. Um, but I'm not familiar with the rat problem in the current status. Okay, thank you. Um, and then we're getting close on time, so I'll just wrap up with one final question. Um, Christina, uh, do you have any recommended books that um, that you used in your preparation, either field guides or or um, books about the natural history of the, of the islands? Anything that um, that you might recommend? Oh boy, um, there are a lot of books that are, or just Google or internet or anything videos about the Galapagos. I actually. Before I went, I looked up our guide, Etienne, and he wrote a few guides that you can find on Amazon, which I found very uh, cool and interesting to uh, go through. But there is just so many uh, things. I don't have anything um, specific uh, that I went through uh, to read, but I did check out his uh, publications, which I found on Amazon. And um, yeah, that was great. Yeah. I do, I do see one more. Oh, hi, Adam. I, I just was looking at the Q&A and Adam was on the boat with us. He was wondering if there was a doctor or crew member with medical. Yes, Dr. Pablo, we called him, our cruise director uh, on the boat. Talk about uh, being good at a lot of different things. We had a little uh, scrape on the knee or something, you know, going in and out. And I'm just amazed how attentive uh, they were, uh, Pablo was. And so we, we nicknamed him uh, Dr. Pablo on top of being cruise director and everything else because they were just awfully good at everything they did and there to take care of you. So, yep. Great, thank you. Um, okay, well, um, I think at this point we can go ahead and wrap up. Um, as, as mentioned, if you're interested in joining Christina in the field, we do have several trips planned and we'll be sending out uh, details about these programs in the follow-up email that we send. Uh, we'll also be sending out a recording to today's webinar, so you'll be able to watch the recording if you'd like and, and see more information about those trips as well, uh, as also some links to see more of Christina's work. Um, so with that, I'd just like to say thank you again to Christina for uh, sharing your photography and your videos with us. Uh, it was very engaging and just very cool to see. So thank you for your, your time today. My pleasure. And um, thank you to everyone who joined us. Thank you. Thank you so and, much. Uh, Thanks, Paul Brick. Yeah, thank you. Um, we hope you all have a rest, wonderful rest of your afternoon, and we wish you all a uh, safe, happy, and healthy new year. Thank you. Thanks, Christina. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.